everyone. This is Jake Symbol ASMR. I'm doing this kind of off the cuff. I've been playing this and I thought I would uh, do a let's play or something for you guys. I found this beautiful shot of Noctis staring out at the Rock of Ravido from this uh, boat that they added in the Royal Edition DLC, which I'm so happy they added. As you know from the title, this is Final Fantasy XV. I do believe this is one of my favorite games. I've talked about it a lot in my other videos, so you know that I have. Um, I kind of disagree with the, the general assessment that fans have of this game. I think it's really amazing. I think it is a great entry in the Final Fantasy series. I love it is because it's just a vibe. I think, you know, fishing, the whole premise of it is a road trip with your closest friends, and you go camping and fishing and exploring. It's a beautiful day-night cycle. Also, I hope you don't mind some controller sounds in here. Um, see, look at the, the beautiful, like, sunset we're seeing right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, fish a little bit. This is my second, like, playthrough of this game. Um, the first time I played through it, I didn't really hit this game. One thing I will give the critics, one of many things I will give the critics, is that, um, it has very quirky mechanics, and so my first time through, I was a little overwhelmed by, like, the combat and all the, um, like, minigame mechanics and such. So I didn't really appreciate like I didn't really appreciate things like the fishing and and stuff, but I actually really enjoy fishing now. Cause for one thing it's an excuse to go explore. And it's also like it's cool because you can collect the fish for your um cooking recipes that Ignis makes at camp.
my first Final Fantasy game was Final Fantasy VII. In, yeah, I played it 20 years ago at my, um, my babysitter's son was the same age as me. We would play PlayStation in the morning before she took us to school. And yeah, so Final Fantasy VII is one of the more sci-fi ones, and this one is obviously more sci-fi. And more than being sci-fi, it's like they said, um, the whole tagline of the game is like a fantasy based on reality. And um, I think that's why I love this game so much, is that I've been a fan for years and years, and then, you know, this is like, this whole series is a bunch of fantasy worlds that you just get really absorbed in, and I feel very familiar with. And then you play this game, and it contains so many references and elements that directly resemble the real world. Like, for example, this uh, fishing boat. It's just crazy. It's This is like King Regis's fishing boat, the main character's dad. And it's, I, I think it's cute and funny, but also really cool that, like, this is the royal fishing boat. And it's just kind of, it's just kind of a boat that you might have on any middle class lake house, you know. Maybe a little over, I don't know. Um, same with the royal car. I mean, that thing, that thing is, um, pretty swaggy, but it's also like, it's a car, you know? It's called the Regalia. Um, yeah. And being on this fishing boat, um, I mean, for one, the rest of the game is a vibe, like camping and stuff, and adding this in is just one more vibe. Like, going out on a boat with your friends, you know? Except instead of partying, they're like, on an adventure or whatever. Which honestly, I would prefer, like, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't party if they had a grand adventure to be on instead, but... Look at Gladio there doing his pull-ups. That's cute. Um, yeah, and also, like, my dad was, um, my dad is, a, is an outdoorsman, and he, when I was a little kid, well, actually, throughout my childhood, through my teenage years, um, he would have me on every other weekend, because I had a single mom, and, uh, we would sometimes, on those weekends, we would go on trips to the Great Lakes, because I'm from around there, and so we would, like, get a cabin or stay on our campsite or something and get up real early, like, five in the morning, and, um, like, go out on his boat and then watch the sunrise over the Great Lake, you know, and go out there almost until you couldn't see the coast. And if you haven't, like, done that before, it really is such a vibe. You drop anchor, and you set up your fishing poles, and you just wait. Agnes talk. Yeah. Um, I actually, I, I first played this game. Another reason I love it is just because, like, two years ago I was in a really bad place. Um, it was two summers ago, summer 2019, and I needed to just, like, stimulate myself and get out of the house, you know, stop stewing. So I went to, uh, the game store and I found 
I mean, I hadn't played this yet. I just, like, hadn't made time for it yet. But I found a pretty affordable used copy of this game, but it was the day one edition. It didn't have this boat and all the other Royal Edition enhancements. So, like, you know, I played it, but I actually didn't really enjoy this boat feature because I, I didn't, like, it didn't occur to me to uh, download the Royal Edition DLC until, like, I had already beaten the game. And then I was doing post game, but it, like, even, it was a while into me even doing the post game that I got the Royal Edition. So playing it again has been a good opportunity to, um, uh, I don't know, check out some of these features I didn't catch the first time. you can watch the fish like take interest in your lure um i don't know it's it's really cool i think this game was made like on a crunch it was in development hell for a while and then i think like when i don't know when they figured it out and like started actually finishing it they probably had to allocate time and resources to certain things and then certain things didn't get so much attention so I think they didn't get a lot they didn't um, get a lot of time to really smooth out the battle system and bring it to its fullest potential but the, there are things that clearly they put a lot of thought and time into like for example the fish there's so many species of fish, and they're, like, beautifully rendered and designed. And then the recipes that you can cook. There's just, like, dozens of recipes in this game that, like, they get served to you, and it's this beautiful dish. Like, this beautiful food, so detailed. Like, I'll cook something later. Um... And, I mean, truly, I think that that's the thing, is, like, if you want to see the good in this game, if you want, if, if, if you want to know why, you know, what are the right and wrong reasons to play it, I think the best reason to play it is just, like, vibe. It has, like, a little bit of the Animal Crossing appeal, I think. I, uh, I swear I've said these things a lot before on my channel, but occasionally I get monomaniacal about this game again. My friend was kind of making fun of me, not making fun of me, he just thought it was funny because, like, I kept posting on my social media my, like, hot take that's, like, Final Fantasy XV is a great game. Not just good, but great. To me, like, nice. Also, I just got another tide grouper. I think I'm doing pretty good on that. But he DM'd me and he was like, How many times a day do you have a variation of this exact thought? And I was like, Oh no, am I getting annoying with it? And he was like, No, I just think it's funny. Like, that you always have this these thoughts buzzing in the back of your head about, like, all day. It's funny to imagine you, like, all day in the back of your head thinking about Final Fantasy XV. Excuse the car noises. Um, and I was like, yeah, you get me. I'm like, my wheels are always spinning about my obsession of the month, and right now it's Final Fantasy XV. I listened to this podcast episode, um, you know, where I, where I got the term vibe, I had been calling it that before, but, like, this podcast is called Slappers, I think, um, and they, like, rate songs from good video game soundtracks, and they did an episode on 
this one, which shout out Yoko Shimomura, I love the soundtrack in this game so much, and shout out Florence and the Machine. Florence Welch made me cry in the credits of this game, but their way of describing it is, it's not a game, it's a vibe. And like, I do think it's a game, like I do th I actually really enjoy the combat system and stuff. Despite that there are like some kind of, some flaws. And it's also a little bit experimental, so like, what do you expect? But yeah, it's not a game, it's a vibe, like, if you want, even if you want to just enjoy the main story of this game, you kind of have to do some sidetracking and camping and uh, side quests and exploration because the emotional appeal of this game is in the relationship between the four main characters who are best friends. And like, um, that, that's why I liked IGN's review of the game because they get it, like that's really the core accomplishment of this game. That's why I cried at the end. Um, the only other Final Fantasy ending that made me cry was Final Fantasy X, but not as much as the ending to this game. Um, yeah, and I have this experience with this game where I was like, uh, uh, to be honest, like the the main story like is kind of confusing. Like, you kind of, it's kind of a good idea to, like, read up on the lore and, and just read, not spoil anything, but, like, read, um, summaries of the different chapter main stories because I was so lost when I, um, played it. And I also, like, do think it's kind of, like, weirdly told and kind of scanned, like, it, it clearly was rushed, especially in, like, the last third of the game. It becomes completely linear. But, um, I had this experience, you know, like, all of that, and I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know, like, I can clearly see this didn't, you know, and I was like, am I not gonna, like, enjoy this game enough because I'm, like, too dumb to understand the main story, but when I beat it, I realized, like, the main, you know, the main story and the lore are really cool if you, like, pay attention and do your best to understand it, but what it, what is most important is the main characters, and that is one narrative accomplishment that it's very much a character, character-driven game. It's about how the, the dynamic between the main characters develops, um, throughout the game. Um, I am spending a lot of time fishing at the moment. I'm definitely going to go back to the mainland. And, um, um, do exploration there and check out all the beautiful sights there and do some quests. And also I am going to head to Altisha at the end. I think I want to end in Altisha, so... There will be lots more vibing throughout this video. I just am kind of obsessed right now with catching the fish that I want to have. Um, that experience I was talking about, about like the dynamic between the main characters, the same thing happened to me with Final Fantasy VIII. I think Final Fantasy VIII is comparable to this game in many ways, and one of them is that it just has a weird world building that is a little bit, like, nonsensical, if you think about it, and, like, also just a weirdly weird plot, weird, you know, it's cool, it's just very weird, and, like, it's very, it's a lot like this game, too, and how, like, real life it is, um, but... So I was like, I don't, I was like, with eight, I was just straight up like, I don't know if I even care about this plot, like, what the heck. Um, I love Gladio's plot, sorry, or chin ups, whatever they are. But when I beat it, I realized that, like, one, it, I think it's, it's campy. Eight, eight story is like just 
is so weird. It's like kind of campy and goofy, and I think that's almost on purpose. But also, what matters in uh, um, matters in eight is the love story. Like, the, there's this sequence after the credits, or maybe it's just the actual ending. And the, the, the ending, like, the very last shot of the ending is like, oh my god, that's so sweet and beautiful. And, like, it really was about the characters the whole time. The world is just the background, and also just the fantasy appeal, and, you know... I try to appreciate everything, I guess. Maybe I don't. I don't know if that's true, but... I'm trying to keep the mouth sounds to a minimum. But I do need to hydrate when I have the chance, so excuse that. This would just be like a, a whisper ramble with the gameplay. So I don't know, I'm gonna talk about what I wanna talk about. And I think if you're if you haven't played this game, there's no spoilers here, just so you know. And um also like I don't advance the main story at all. Like I'm just gonna um I'm just gonna like check out beautiful sights, so even if you haven't played the game, I think the appeal, you, like, I think that I just wanted to make this so that you can, like, enjoy the beautiful visuals. And also, like, oh shoot, I wanted to go up to the second floor, the deck, so we can check out the sights. Okay, sorry, I've got beautiful sights for you, speaking of those. Um, but yeah, just, the uh, I wanted to, to do a whisper, and then I'll, you know, have, have this here too, I think. It'd be great to sleep too, I, I love, um, there's another ASMR video with Final Fantasy XV gameplay, and I, I just find ASMR Let's Plays, like, so relaxing, personally, like, And also, it's, I've talked about this before, but my main trigger is, like, nerdiness. Yeah. You can't say this game isn't absolutely beautiful. I love how vertical the game is. It always surprises me. I'm not going to take that photo, because I already did. But, um, it just, like, obviously there's, you know there's travel across, but it's very much not a flat landscape, and, um, there's so many vantage points, and, and I love how you can see, like, story-relevant landmarks are always in the distance, like, oh, there's the Rock of Ravito, and then you can see the ravine there, and, um, the, like, spires over the Disk of Gothis is in the distance. Um, it's just, it's, it's a very thoughtfully designed open world, because it does a cool thing. See the Rock of Ravido with the smoke, and that's so far away, but they still, like, are depicting it. Um, that's, um, just one of the, like, thoughtful things to do as a game designer, is, like, integrate story with gameplay and visuals, and you know, you can see that disc of God that's where there's a god kind of sleeping from from this vantage point. I think I'm definitely gonna I might go back to um Lestalum. There are these side quests which I'm sorry to say are pretty tedious. Um, but they like give you an opportunity to like climb these pylons which also give you a beautiful view. I, I wanna get, I wanna, um, Noctis does like
right now, I think the Vesper Pool is so gorgeous. I don't know what those, like, spires sticking out of the water are, but oh, look at the, the reflection of the sky on the lake. It is a beautiful day. I don't think I want to do any combat right now. Just a pain. And then you can get your chocobos to swim.
This game is kind of a pain. 
makes sense why it's there, so that your collection doesn't become super cluttered with dumb pictures. And the photos actually are important for like the emotional, emotional experience of the game. Like, just be thoughtful about which, which pictures you save, because it's important to the emotional experience of everything. Okay, I think I'm gonna... Get out of here. And... I think that... Next, I want to go to Lestalem. Um, there is a mission there that is, honestly, let's check it out. I want to know where I'm supposed to go for this quest because it's just pointing me to myself and I thought that there was somewhere to go to get what Cindy wants me to but I don't know anyway let's see if there's any new side quests which I don't see except Dave which I don't want to do his but anyway I'm going to Lestalem. Gonna take a beautiful drive because I haven't really driven yet. And that's one of the biggest vibes in this game is uh, driving around. Listening to songs from other Final Fantasy games. This is one of my big car jams in this game, and it's one of my favorite tracks in the whole series. The Bellum Garden song from Final Fantasy VIII. It's so peaceful and gentle and beautiful. And it's perfect for like driving your car around this serene environment, you know, in the sunlight. I hope that, I know that Final Fantasy 16 is, is not doing any of the sci-fi stuff, it's gonna be high fantasy for the first time in so many installments. I think, uh, yeah, but I do hope that it has vibes like this, like, that the open world is beautiful like this. And that there's, um, like, opportunities to just enjoy the scenery. And there'll probably be a great day-night cycle and all this. The combat of that game. Oh. Prompto is doing his thing where he asked me to take pictures of. Mm, I, I always just say nothing because like he takes enough pictures of everyone i don't know i love these pylons the power i mean it looks like power lines i don't know besides like the quote unquote real world i specifically love like the americana in this game like, it is, it just looks a lot like what America looks like when you're taking a road trip. And so it, besides being like quote unquote real world, it's specifically like my world. The America I live in and there's like the silos and the farmhouses and streetlights and highways. Um, I wish that you could ride around in those sky cars, like you can climb the pylons, which 
which I think I'm about to do, but you can't really, you can't ride the, the sky cars that the pylons are connected to. Wow. The area around the Listalem is so pretty. And I love this uh, tunnel leading into Listalem. You can like look out from here.
turned out when I was doing the, um, there's these, like, there's this series of dungeons where if you go to the bottom of all the dungeons and loses, there will be, um, a secret door, and then you go in and it's these kind of super dungeons challenge, and that was great, but when you do it over, when you do them, like, one after the other, it just gets really repetitive, because it's just battle after battle after battle. One of them is, like, a hundred floors deep, which is total insanity. Um, but there's still a lot left to enjoy. I kind of, I want to do those just so I can, like, play with the combat, because it's really satisfying once you figure out the combat in this game. It's very, like, acrobatic and kinetic. A lot of jumping and zooming around, and I don't think it gets enough credit for that. People just complain about, like, oh, all you do is hold a button. That is absolutely not true. There's so much more. Like, to attack, you do literally just hold the circle button. Okay. Um... I need to pay attention, actually, because I don't know which pylon I'm supposed to climb. This is a very big area. It's really pretty out here, though, so I don't mind kind of lollygagging. It looks like the, they're putting a check mark on my map. I don't know. I don't remember if I'm supposed to, like, pass under all the pylons or what. I thought I have to climb one. So maybe the check mark means that it's just letting me know that I already checked that one and that's not it. Chocobo time. like kind of tedious side quests but I, I 
actually like this one. It's very like, it, it's very simplistic, but it feels like you're just doing like manual work. Um, which it's different from some of the other quests where you're like running around keeping your eyes peeled. Cause in this one, it's almost like a manual labor simulator or something, I don't know. It adds to like the real world feeling of this game a little bit. There's nothing wrong in games with a little bit of, um, back to my car. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of, I don't want to say tedious, but non-thrilling or everyday kind of tasks. I think it's really valid to try to emulate those virtually and, and make, you know, take interesting angles on them. And in this game, it's cool because, like, like, this is a fantasy based on reality and you can spend your time, like, doing, it's not all fantasy, you know? You can't have just the adventure and the and the combat and the, the demons and the quest. You can like stop and you can do like very simple inspection work, which is what really keeps the world running. Even in fantasy worlds. Okay, I'm rambling, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna go. Um even in fantasy worlds. You have to, I mean, you have to think like someone has to be doing very mundane work, right? Where should I go next? There's like a lot of quests that would just give me a good reason to explore, but I don't know, I might. I might head to Altisha soon. I know what I'll do. I will.
avoid making mouth sounds, I don't know. I just, uh, I just took that trip over there to get a beetle shell because those are good. You can make, uh, triple cast spells in those, so you get, like, you get a spell that will, like, cast it three times, and sometimes that, that'll, like, kill entire groups of enemies at once. Okay. Maybe I'll check out some hunts. That could be fun. The Garlopos. I think that thing drops a pretty good, uh... Pretty good, uh... Pretty good... Piece of meat. The claw makes good recipes, I think. Oh, that's right by Cape Kayan. That's also a beautiful spot, so maybe I'll run there. Maybe I'll take a trip to that part because there's a beautiful uh, seaside view there. Just absolutely gorgeous, and there's a camping point. And, um, yeah, fight this. Monster, this will be a fun fight. Everything in order. Yep. I'm excited for this. Now I can just drive. Also, the um, tune I'm playing right now in the car is one of my favorite car tunes in this game. It's the song from the forest in Final Fantasy XIV. That game has an absolutely incredible soundtrack. And uh, this song is just beautiful. It's another song that's perfect for exploring the beautiful open world of Loses. I've only played a little bit of 14. I got stressed out during a dungeon raid. Here, actually, if you've played 14, I might need your help in the comments, so... Um, in the very first raid in that pi pirate world, I died, like, right near the end, and then I was running all the way back through, and they kept saying, use the shortcut, Jake, and I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about in no time, and I'm googling it with one hand, and I can't find anything about a shortcut, and I ask my friend who's played, like, uh, like 200 hours of that game, and he doesn't know what they mean. And I, but I was just stressed out to be getting scolded by everyone. Anyway, oh, this, wow. I'm saying wow genuinely, like, um, over there, the, the, the mountains converging on the horizon. I hadn't really ever drank in that view before, but that's gorgeous. Also, there was a get off spot there and I don't know what it was so I'm gonna have to make note of it but anyway I really like the drive towards Cape Cayenne I'm gonna um, purchase some lunch in me because you can use it to grind Ignis's um, cooking skills but I really love the, dr the drive to Cape Kayam for many reasons. One is that it's beautiful. You get a lot of beautiful sights and, and like see the sea right there. But also I love that part of the game because uh, Gladio's sister Iris is with you and she can join you on um, a side quest into the Malmalum thicket. And she's uh, like, she's like having a good time with you and it's like, clearly she's having a good time, and then when it's over, she's like, I'm gonna miss hanging out with you guys. And it's just that one of the, one of those other parts that's just, uh, that makes this game, like, a beautiful game about friendship. Is having, you know, I don't know, she uses the term hanging out, you know, and it, it you know, you really were hanging out, she was on the road with you for a little bit. And what I didn't, well, I mean, I like it, and I don't like it. They give her, like, a bright pink chocobo, and I like it because it's beautiful, but I dislike it because it's like, come 
because then I don't have to change the video or anything. And it makes it easier to fall asleep too because I don't have to wake up and change it or any of that. So anyway, I mean, I'm taking my time. I don't think any of you will complain because like you can just stop watching if you fall asleep or get bored. But. just makes 
I don't know, it's just very, it's like, how did you get this? And I'm like, I don't know, I gave it to myself from the future. Okay, I was like kind of annoyed that it was nighttime because I want to put all this shit, it's really beautiful at night. I love the the houses with the light, the lights and stuff. It reminds me very much of my city. I can just say Philadelphia, I've already, whatever. But in Philadelphia, there are these houses on the, um, is it the, on the, the Schuylkill River that it, are, they look just like this in Aldisha. I'm checking if I need any more, um, fish. May do, I, I figured, like, fishing would be cute in Aldisha. I don't know if I, I don't know. But anyway, it, it, there's these houses on the river by the art museum that make it look just, it's beautiful and, and the, it's lit up from inside and they even look kind of like the ones in Aldisha, so Aldisha at night reminds me of my city, Philadelphia. Please, please don't stalk me. This is a huge city. You will never find me. But, um, yeah. The architecture is very, I mean, just like in a lot of places in this game, the architecture is a lot like what you'd find in, you know, our world. Again, that mixing of Final Fantasy in our world. I'm gonna skip that gondola ride. I hope you enjoyed the first one, but I want it to be daytime. Sorry for my roommate talking. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. This is Mako. So, care to take a cruise? And um maybe I'll take I'll take a gondola ride. I'm sorry, I was thinking I was thinking if I went to Mago, there might be a way to change it to daytime, but then I realized I can just go to the Lavillo Hotel, so I'm doing that. Sorry for that, my roommate is up and about. I, I usually don't mind if there's a little bit of background noise like that in a video, so I hope you don't either. are from a tedious 
first side quest and like the second half of the game that whatever the linear part they threw in side quests in the second half I think just if you like are kind of screwed on experience maybe I don't know or maybe they again like are opportunities to explore playing this is helping the design. I really haven't noticed a lot of the intricacies of like the design of the city, but it's really cool. I really love the sort of um, American-esque like character of the political system in Altisha slash Accordo. Like, the there's like a governor's mansion, which is a lot like like a capital building you'd see in like a American city, and the um the the, the like secretary or you know the the ruler of um Accordo, and when you meet with her, looks like she's dressed just like Hillary Clinton. Like I'd be surprised if if she wasn't like um if she wasn't like she's wearing like a Hillary Clinton-esque pantsuit and um this isn't like me celebrating Hillary Clinton I'm just saying like I'm celebrating the aesthetic reference to Hillary Clinton and she kind of talks and um acts like Hillary Clinton I mean I'm just saying I think it might be like a purposeful reference oh what does he want to take a picture well why not check out whatever it is he wants to check out. I wanted to get um, a caricature done, but I don't know if the caricature lady comes out when it's raining. There we go, that's Leviathan. The Leviathan scene in this game might be my favorite with Luna. Talking to Leviathan. Okay. Actually, let's see. I don't think I have to delete any pictures, because I already did. Yeah, I'm kind of sad it rained. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I only, on my on this playthrough, I only, I played the gambling game for the first time, it's so fun. It's, uh, it's kind of like fantasy dog fighting, you bet on animals that, uh, kill each other, but it's fun, and you can get some cool prizes, like a fishing rod and stuff. Okay, I don't think the caricature lady is here. Um. Yeah, I think I might wrap up there. Where are we off to? I had fun. I hope people enjoy this. I don't know how it will be received, but please do give me your opinion. On a survey I did, Let's Plays seemed popular. So, but I'm just gonna see. Let me know if you want more, any other games you want me to play, etc.